All right, good evening, guys. This is going to be our first set of notes for the Industrial Revolution. I know we haven't talked any about this yet. Um, hopefully you remember a little bit from class today, but as sort of an opener to these notes, I know we don't traditionally use that in the flipped classroom, but this is going to be your homework assignment or the thing that I check when you come into class. I want you to choose one item that you could not live without. For most of you, that's going to be your iPod or your computer, um, video game, something, anything you can think of. And I want you to start with that item and create a flow chart describing what other inventions were needed in order for that item to be created. So here's my example. I chose an airplane. I like to travel, so that's going to be my one item I can't live without. If I start all the way at the end with the combustion engine, that's the kind of engine that airplanes use, and I know that that's really important. Um, what does it take in order to get that engine? Well, you have to have oil. You have to have oil not only to make gas, but you have to have oil for the parts to work and everything. Um, then you've got factories, then you've got a steam engine, and then you go, all, you go all the way back to coal. So you see kind of the connection here if you put arrows in between all of them. First you get coal that fires the steam engine, and then you get the steam engine that creates factories, and you get factories that create technology for oil, and you use that oil to create the combustion engine, and finally, you can get an airplane. Um, I want you to do this after you watch this video. Don't do it beforehand because you might not understand um, the entire assignment. We're gonna talk mainly about the causes and effects of the Industrial Revolution. As you can see, I have Leonard right here along with me, so if you have any questions, just ask him. Um, another sort of quick, well, there he goes. Another quick homework assignment that I want you to do is find one vocabulary word. And I put letters next to these words. Um, and based on the first letter of your last name, I want you to define that one word. So if your last name is daily, you would define the entrepreneur word. Okay, And you're going to bring that plus your flowchart into class with me. And that's going to give us a better idea of what we're doing the next day. Life before the Industrial Revolution was much like it would seem in Warsaw if Dorman and Gallatin Steel and all of those companies didn't exist. A lot of farming, most of this was subsistence farming, which is one of the words that you need to define and to sort of help you along, those of you with that letter of your name. Um, subsistence farming is where you grow crops in order to survive. Okay, you don't grow a whole lot to sell. So it's we're not talking cash crops here, we're talking family farms enough for you to survive. It was also based on what's known as the cottage industry, which was basically, it's exactly how it sounds. You have a small cottage or a small farm that produces most of the industry in a region or a neighborhood. Um, the Industrial Revolution changed this. It changed the way that people live. Some causes, we have three major causes. One is that there are agricultural advancements. Um, so better farming practices create the need for fewer laborers, fewer farmers. If you have a piece of machinery that can accomplish the job of four people and you only have to have one person working it, what are those other three people going to do? Okay, so old farmers, those other three people that don't know that no longer have jobs are going to have to do something. Another agricultural advancement would be the enclosure movement. Enclosure movement means that instead of having just big open spaces where people would farm wherever they could set down, people started to fence in their properties, creating really strict boundaries. So people who maybe didn't own land but lived, we call them squatters, lived in a place and farmed that place are kind of not allowed to do that anymore now that there are so many fences. Um, and that's the enclosure movement. So those people are moving to cities. This creates urbanization. Urbanization is the move to cities. There are also a bunch of new inventions, primarily the steam engine. This is the catalyst or the start of it all. Um, that would be, that would sort of evolve into the electrical engine and then the diesel engine. Um, steam engines ran on coal and used water power to um, propel things forward. So rail cars would use the steam engine. There were canals, there were steamboats, cotton gins and sewing machines, 
Um, eventually, high pieces of technology like the telegraph, the light bulb, the transatlantic cable where we could send messages from Great Britain to the New World in the blink of an eye. Okay, So these are all really big things that cause the Industrial Revolution to sort of take off. Lastly, we have the factory system. Okay, you can put industrial capitalism within the factory system or as its own. Um, I'm going to sort of talk about it as both. But the factory system system is where entrepreneurs create factories. Um, entrepreneurs are business people, people who have a lot of capital or a lot of money, um, and they create these factories where you'll have several pieces of machinery and a lot of people will work to create one item. Okay. And this mass production of that one item creates new products, but they're also really inexpensive products because if you can make them with machines and you can hire children, like you see in the video or in the picture on this slide, um, you can make things pretty inexpensive. Industrial capitalism can be put within the factory system because that's sort of what it took for factories to be created. Industrial capitalism is basically saying that you want to have private owners or entrepreneurs to create the wealth in a community or in, an, in a society. And you want government to stay out of that business. You want government to stay out of economics, essentially. And all of this comes from Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. And if you remember back, he was one of our Enlightenment thinkers. Okay, This is sort of freedom to make as much money as you want, if you want to think of it as one of those Enlightenment thoughts. Immediately after the Industrial Revolution, you have a rise in a middle class. Okay, Entrepreneurs or those people who are starting factories become wealthier than even the old nobility. Okay, Those famous people, those people with the big last names, we would call them old money today. So this new money, entrepreneurship, was taking off. And industrial capitalism becomes a new economic system, and it's an economic system that's going to pretty much take over the globe. The United States is an industrial capitalist nation. As a result, you have a lot of these entrepreneurs, and you have a rising middle class. You also get this working class. They're not quite the lower class. They're not quite the middle class. Now, instead of having subsistence farming where you grew the amount of food you needed to survive, you have wage labor. Okay, so people make a minimum wage or people make the amount of money that they need to survive. Leonard's staring at me. What are you doing? He's really concerned with me right now because I'm talking to no one. Um, sorry, sidetracked. But back to these immediate effects, the third one is urbanization. Okay, Cities begin to explode and primary, primarily the cities near rivers and oceans because that offers transportation to kind of get all of these goods out to people so you can sell them out to places around the world. The long-term effect of the Industrial Revolution is that as you get new technology, more new technology comes, okay? So te new technology begets new technology. So let's look at this little chart at the bottom. You get the steam engine, which immediately, which is the arrow down, creates things like steamboats. And steamboats are really important because now instead of everything going from, let's say, Cincinnati down the Ohio River all the way to Mississippi, you can have things go from Mississippi all the way up and back to Cincinnati. And that's pretty pretty impressive. But you also get new technology, and that's the arrow pointing to the right. So after you get the steam engine, you get a lot of new machines. And then those machines will maybe create things like trains, um, a new method of transportation. But they'll also create factories. And then with those factories, you can create cars. And then maybe with a new factory, you can create a whole economic system. And this cycle can go on and on and on forever. Okay, until you get to things like the iPod and the iPad and I anything. Okay, um, new technology begets new technology. Mr. Madison, the Industrial Revolution changed the face of the modern novel forever. Discuss citing specific examples. Industrial Revolution, to me, is 
just like a story I know called The Puppy Who Lost His Way. The world was changing, and the puppy was getting bigger. So you see, the puppy was like industry, in that they were both lost in the woods. And nobody, especially the little boy, society, knew where to find him. Except that the puppy was a dog. But the industry, my friend, that was a revolution. Mr. Madison, what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul.